Today is the release date of Star Wars Outlaws. Uh, I put this tweet out yesterday. I have an insider who uh, who works for a major big box retailer. And the long and short of it is they have a very low amount of pre-orders for Star Wars Outlaws. They also There's also an extremely low amount of pre-orders for the new Assassin's Creed that's coming out. Um, so I don't think there's a whole lot of buzz for this game. And I know that Ubisoft has put a lot of money in marketing this game. Um, but... They've also, there's also just like most most games, there is a uh, a Reddit account or a subreddit for uh, for this that you can go in and go talk about the game in a forum. But apparently the Star Wars Outlaw subreddit is straight up banning people who are being critical of the game. And let's go over to that park place for this story. This is just balls crazy. Um, <laughs> it says the Star Wars Outlaw subreddit is, is reportedly banning individuals for criticizing Ubisoft's latest game. Uh, Reddit user o Ugly Coyote reached out to that park place and informed us Reddit Star Wars Outlaws is banning and silencing people who are critics of the game during early access, also deleting posts. Found myself victim of this, uh, of this, this myself after I got reports from other people saying they were banned. He then speculated this looks like damage control before the game officially launches this week. Uh, he, he shared some screenshots indicating he was banned from the subreddit and informed that park place. He was not given a reason to why he was banned. He said, "I asked, I asked them why no, uh, I asked them why no reply. Then I got, uh, then I asked for the moderator's name who banned me and was muted for seven days. Uh, and you can see, kind of like what he said um, here. It, it was nothing really critical of the game. Says there was a lot of a uh, lot of posts deleted on Star Wars Outlaws Reddit, and me and my friends replied uh, to those posts, also voicing." criticisms about graphics performance and so on so my friend then posted about censoring post and was banned for posting non-related topic comments for i think three days or so in that deleted post many people said their friends also got banned i got banned when i questioned the age of a user and his beliefs by stating that he blindly believes propaganda and described the critical parts of the game like performance hardware needs uglification of the main character and so on also i said he should be aware of false media hype like ign so that's kind of where we're at right now as you have these these reddit sub these subreddits going in and going to bat for these companies uh alex i'd love to hear typical your thoughts reddit, on this typical reddit behavior typical uh, redditor you know r slash anti-work I, I i'm a dog walker i have you know the kind of thing communism is good typical reddit ass behavior that's that's literally what it is. Like, just I don't know if people even use Reddit anymore. How that website's still active is a, is a shocker to me. Right. But that's you know that that that's what's expected. If you don't like, even me who goes in the path of exile subreddit, right, to like see whatever whatever drama is going on with that game, like there are people just doing the dumbest shit possible there and getting banned for the dumbest shit possible, and the mods just going absolutely apeshit for dumb shit. I expect it. I mean, I heard IGN gave Concord a seven. Yeah. They did. So, so I mean, every game is a seven nowadays anyways. Who gives a shit? Like, and that's that the one thing. Gonna, that Star Wars game is going to bomb anyways. I, I I think it's not going to perform like like they hope it performs. Um, so with that said, that's part one of this. Okay. So we got Star Wars. Part two. Oh, there's, there's multiple parts to this. We're diving deep into Ubisoft. Uh, Alex, did you play X Defiant at all? Ubisoft's other? No. Okay. So no, Blabs, I'm not. A, I'm not a peasant. I play Counter Strike like a man. Blabs, you were very high on this game. You were like, "This could be a big game." Uh, I, I never said that. I just said it could be an alternative and it could be fun to play. And I don't think you know, just absolutely shitting on you know a whole company when a game might actually be decent. You know, give it a try. And I enjoyed it, but I haven't played it in like a good month or two. Okay. Well, you're not alone. As yeah. Ubisoft's, this is a rumor, but Ubisoft's X Defiant is seeing continuously declining player numbers and a lack of player spending, which when your game is free, that's very hard to make money there. So Ubisoft, this was another big initiative for uh, for Ubisoft this year. And, and some people have said this game is like really, really good. Uh, it's, yeah. It is a good alternative. But with Call of Duty 6 coming out or Black Ops 6 coming out, people are going to be into that. You know, that's kind of the, the normie game. But it says the game has been struggling to obtain 20,000 current uh, concurrent players across all platforms. Uh, another source shared that Ubisoft would probably be happy with that number. Um, but this suggests that the current player number counts as much lower than uh, 20,000 as they're getting ready to go into season three. 
Um, but they've continuously dropped over and over and over again since the launch. So yeah, we, sense. yeah, right. And that does make sense, you know, uh, and that's really why seasons take place in these, in these, uh, games as a service, um, games, right. Where you have the, you, the idea is you want to peak interest every 90 days to drive up through each season or whatever you see apex has done this continuously since it's lot since it's launched what four or five years ago apex legends um and they're still around it, and it, on this article it actually mentions apex legends has uh close to fifty thousand people still playing it so you know apex is still around doing its thing so we have star wars outlaws now we have uh x defiant which is losing things rapidly uh, we saw we talked about uh, the lack of interest with Assassin's Creed Shadows that's coming out here uh, in the next couple months, um, and uh, these are some big bombs when it comes to Ubisoft. They're, I mean, obviously, we're going to see where things go with Star Wars Outlaws, right? We're going to mm-hmm. see where things go with with Assassin's Creed Shadows, but the arrow is pointing down with Ubisoft, and I think most people recognize this. Do you have a favorite like Ubisoft franchise, Alex? No. But don't forget Skull and Bones. Correct. <laughs> yes, you are correct. Yeah, and that's the other one, the quadruple A Skull mm-hmm. and Bones, yeah. which was released. So wasn't, you're looking at wasn't the rumor though that Star Wars Outlaws was actually supposed to be Beyond Good and Evil too? Wasn't that? The I don't rumor? know. I haven't heard that. I didn't hear that. That's interesting. Yeah, it, it was floating around that like Star Wars Outlaws was actually supposed to be Beyond Good and Evil too, and that's why it kind of like looks so haggled together. Wow. Oh yeah, there's like a whole Reddit thread from over a year ago about it, huh? Because it it like, it like it like it all starts to fit. Like when you start looking at it, in that in that case, like it just start like like, hmm. yeah. They says Star Wars Outlaws is a reskinned version of Beyond Good and Evil too, and there's like a shit ton of people in this Reddit thread. Interesting. Wow. Yeah. I just know. Titus is Alex Rayman. Yeah. No, I have the tism. It's legit. Like I, (sighs) there there was a point in my time where I had somebody in my chat who showed up into my chat one time mm-hmm. and um and i remember the comment they made six months ago and i pulled up their comment live on stream where they said <laughs> they were never going to come to my channel again and i was like so why are you here six months later on my channel when you said you were never going to be here again and then they left and then they came back when i saw them come back because you can look at the participants in in youtube chat and then i pulled up their chat logs and saw that they were always there <laughs> Let's go. So when Blab says I have the tism, it's it's legitimately mm-hmm. there. Like it is it is there. Oh, um I love it. But um the, the whole seasonality thing with X Defiant, especially, right? And like Apex Legends, mm-hmm. if you look up if you look up Path of Exile, which is I want like the game I'm I'm where I'm gonna it's, it's gonna be my most played game of all time. Mm-hmm. Uh CSGO is at like twelve hundred hours for me. PoE one is at like almost nine to nine hundred to a thousand hours. POE does a season every three months. They do an expansion every three months is what they do. But every three months, the game completely changes from what it was originally. Like this new season, it's a um, a city builder mechanic inside of an action role-playing game. So what you're doing is you're you're collecting different items. You're, you're building your city. You're getting items. You're going back and forth. The season before that, it was about like... Um, like a like a necropolis league where you would go ahead and like find items and then merge them together and things like that so like they completely change the game every single three months and if x defined is not doing anything to like truly make the game vastly different for people to continually come back to play that game through seasons then seasons are just irrelevant honestly you know that brings up a really good conversation we can have another time about if you think that the each season should be restored just for just from a uh, game preservation standpoint like if a game has 10 seasons, should each mm. season be re- be able to be accessed just from a preservation standpoint? You know what I mean? I, I think it that's a really interesting game. conversation. POE does that. POE yeah. does that. What they do is they'll, they'll take specific mechanics from seasons and apply that them and apply them to the core game. So that way they're in that aspect continuously. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think I think it all depends how it'll balance the game directly and if it'll impact like power creep and things like that. Like it's it's more nuanced than just like can we access it? I know that there was a conversation with, um, uh, not no, with uh, with Thor, and um, he did the Half Life videos uh, about uh, about game preservation. Chat, can you help? Oh me yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I I know I know the video you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you mean uh, yeah. Cursed Farms? That Cursed type Farms. Of? Cursed Farms. Uh-huh. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I know there was some conversation, like some some discourse between that between Ross. Um, mm-hmm. Thank you, chat. And so. I think I think it all depends on the game. Like my biggest gripe about Path of Exile is that there's no offline mode. Well, there's like, going to be my biggest like problem with them. Right. 
Well, there, there's definitely, I mean, every game is going to have its ups and downs. There's no perfect game. There's some, there's games that are perfect for you, but they're not per- perfect for everybody. Right. right. Um, but Ubisoft has seen a lot of ups and downs when it comes to, you know, their games and their success as a company. And we talk about where they're struggling, you know, with the release of Star Wars Outlaws, Assassin's Creed, um, and, you know, obviously the, the quadruple A game, Skull and Bones, X Defiant. These are four major releases in a year. And, I think the best way to judge a company and where they're at is by looking at the the public perception and the public investment into their company, specifically through uh, the stock market. Now, Ubisoft has you can buy stock in Ubisoft, and I think it's important to look at Ubisoft stock. Now, this is them in the last month. Okay, now they're down and this looks like a dramatic decrease. And it is it's it's a you know, they're down a little bit. But when you go from like 18 you know, eighteen, nineteen dollars down to down to seventeen. That's a pretty good drop, but it's not, it's not like game changing. Let's go back three more months. That's more telling right here, based off of the excitement level behind this, right? You can see it's a it's a constant look down. Hey, let's go back six months. Okay, you can see they were still up at twenty one dollars. Now they're back down to mm-hmm. seventeen. Hey, let's go back five years and see where they're at. They were up in 2021 and now this is obviously during covid video games are 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 paramount at this time they're up at 84 dollars alex and since that time they've gone from 84 dollars down to 17 18 19 dollars okay holy the, shit the the, evalu- the valuation of their yes holy shit is right the valuation of their company has dropped what it's down 25% of what it was just four years ago, that tells you a lot about things. But hey, let's go back even further. Let's look at the max when they started selling. Look where they're at right now, okay? This is in 2024, right now, today. If you were to go back to when they launched in the year 2000, almost a quarter century ago, right? This is when they're they're going as a company, they're growing, they're, they're figuring things out. This is early on, right? You could have bought stock. You could have bought stock in 2015 mm-hmm. and you would st- you would not have made any money. Actually, you would have lost money based off inflation at this point. So yeah. that's something to keep in mind when it comes to the, the dollar is weaker than it was back in 2000. So I would actually say that that they're in, they are in a worse spot than they possibly have ever been as a public company since since the launch of Pull making up. their Pull up 2000, when, show 2007. Sure. 2007 is right here, right here. And you can Assassin's see. Assassin's Creed 1. So they had a split right here and it, it popped off. Then they had another split, went up a little bit, then it dropped off again. But yes, and, and I'm glad you glad you bring that up, right? The idea of what games were being released at this time, right? What, what games were, were coming out? And they have on their uh, on their website, you know, a history of their projects that they, that they've used along uh, that they've released throughout the days. And this is just their internal studios, but they, you know, you look at some of these, uh, some of these games, Prince of Persia classic, this is 2007, Mm -hmm. uh, ghost recon, uh, Assassin's Creed, Assassin's Creed Four, black flag. And specifically here, you know, the Assassin's Creed series really takes off, uh, even further. And you see that there's like a direct correlation between that and the growth of it, obviously COVID and stuff, but this is, um, I think this is very, very telling, very, very telling about where Ubisoft is. And people are not talking about this enough uh, when it comes to the company as a whole. I, th- I think, think they're in trouble. Bought by Vivendi? I think that they will either, I think there's a distinct possibility that they end up either getting acquired as an as a whole entity yeah. by, by a Microsoft or the, you know, uh, like that or Sony, or they end up selling off their IPs. Like I mentioned this before, but I think Rayman would be a great franchise for Nintendo to go in and buy. Yeah. It's family friendly. I, it's ready to go. I would bet that they would sell off their IPs before selling off wholesale. I agree. I think now what you're seeing is this big resurgence in either people going back to PS1, PS2, or N64, or just going in the, into the AA indie space, which is I think is what's happening here. I agree. I think I think you're about to see a giant. Um, just huge Crash. success, yeah. With, with when it comes to double uh, uh, A and indie titles, for sure. It, it, I think, 
you know, what's the old saying? Is it uh, hard times create soft men, right? And then soft men create hard times, whatever it is, you know. But the point, the point mm -hmm. being that I think we're going to see some real originality come out in the next five years uh, from games. And I think because people are seeing what's happening in AAA and quadruple A games, and it's going to push creativity for sure. So I think the East is going to make a bigger comeback. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do That's I, what I think. I, yeah, I, like I hear that. If you look that. at the first Ascendant, right, like, like once you're done unloading you can then play the game and it's like a fucking it's it's not a bad game the monetization is some pretty shit but it's not a bad game itself from what people have been saying online and things like that and if you look at things like stellar blade and stuff like that like just that style of like action and like good combat and focus on gameplay with with that whole thing remember when prince of persia 2 on the ps2 was out and you had that girl in the intro with her fat ass hanging out yeah was it the warrior I so. within mm -hmm. i forgot which one it's the one where jay it's the one on the cover where he looks like real mean and shit and he's got this fucking the this, this shit like that and the girl's on and she's out there and she's got like her fucking just giant ass on the thing <laughs> and then they had like um then they had uh, chess is warrior within see tism and then um and then they actually had a cosplay contest and somebody did that actual cosplay of that girl mm -hmm. and everybody was like with their cameras out like that like that is like i hate you know don't be don't shoot the messenger but the thing is sex sells and guess what yeah. women like hot women too 